Alright everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at some print differences between the X1C and the H2D standard nozzle and high flow nozzle on the H2D. So I've heard some um, rumors out there, seen a, a couple of things about the X1C being a little bit faster on single uh, color prints than the H2D. So today I'll set up a GoPro and we'll look from the start of the print um, to the end to include, um, you know, any calibration, bed leveling, all of that stuff, right? What does it actually take from when I hit start to finish to get the print um, done on each one? Then I thought it would be good to put the high flow nozzle in the um, H2D and start to play around with the max volumetric speed and increase that to see if that overcomes or makes it even faster than the X1C speed. Um, I have done a couple of prints with the high flow nozzle and the quality wasn't all that great, but I didn't change the max uh, volumetric speed. So we'll try that today um, to see if that makes a difference. So in today's video, we'll be printing a couple of Nimitz Benchies and we'll be looking at speed differences between the X1C, the H2D, and the high flow nozzle. So if all that sounds good, sit back and relax and I'll get everything ready. All right, so here we are in Bamboo Studio. We have a Benchy um, put in here. No changes have been made to the filament or to max volumetric speed or anything like that. Everything's the same. So we'll go ahead and slice the plate, giving us a warning about floating edges. And it's saying that it's gonna take an hour and 15 minutes. And we'll see that the model print time is an hour and seven minutes, but there's eight minutes of prep time or seven minutes, 20 seconds of prep time. So that may make a difference between, you know, prints. Um, there's seven minutes of prep time here. We'll see what it um, says on the X2D. And then um, I will send this to the printer and then cancel the print and then start the print again from the printer and hit the timer. I don't feel like messing around with the SD card. All right, so as you can see from the time lapse, it took a little over a minute and 16, uh, or an hour and 16 minutes. Um, it, I stopped it whenever the bed started to go down and it was an hour, 16 minutes and 45 seconds. The time lapse, the last one that it took was at 35 seconds. Um, so that is, you know, pretty close to what it said there. And I attribute the differences there to how uh, long it takes the nozzle to heat up. Um, that's the one thing I don't think that is accounted for in here. So it needed to heat the nozzle up, which looks like it took a little over a minute. Then there was seven minutes of prep time, hour and seven minutes of print time. And it was right around a minute and 16 or an hour and 16 minutes. So now let's switch over to the X or the H2D and we'll run a similar test on there. Let's sync the filament. So we have the same filament, haven't changed anything, same model. We'll slice the plate and it's showing an hour and 23 minutes, a model printing time of an hour and 10 minutes, prep and time lapse time of nine minutes, 28 seconds. So we do need to check. I don't believe we have time lapse selected on there. If we did have time lapse, that's what it would take. Uh, so the prepare time looks like nine minutes, 28 seconds. And then the time lapse, if you are to do that, adds another two minutes, almost three minutes to the equation there. So it does look like it's a little bit um, slower here, but we'll take a look at um, it from the stopwatch. So again, I'll send this over, cancel it, get the stopwatch ready, and then, um, you know, hit reprint from the, um, the screen on the printer. And as soon as it starts, I'll hit start just like I did on the X1C and we'll see if indeed 
saying here that it's going to be about eight minutes uh, slower on this one. So let's go ahead and print it out and I'll see you when it gets done. All right, so if you noticed in the time lapse there, we were two minutes faster with the H2D than we were with the X1C, at least on the stopwatch. Now here it showed an eight minute difference and um, on the stopwatch, there was a two minute uh, difference the other way. And where I think this difference is coming from is in this prepare time. So when I print, this the bed leveling is set to auto the nozzle offset calibration is set to auto and flow dynamics is set to auto i didn't pay attention to which ones of these were done during the print or whatever but this is where it may save some time in that preparation and the print actually turned out to be faster um, so I do know that we see this in the slicer and I've made um, some comments that I've kind of noticed this, but putting the stopwatch on it, it's actually a little bit faster and that's because of this auto stuff here. Um, I would have to turn all of this stuff on to do an equal comparison, but the fact that this can do it auto um, says a lot. I think that's a fair comparison. Uh, default to default and the capability of the printer um so some of your prints might be a little bit faster on the x1c but they might be a little bit faster on the h2d and when we're talking about two minutes over an hour on your really really long prints that's gonna still be less than 10 or 15 minutes so i don't think it's a monumental change there all right so if we remember from bamboo's website here on the high flow um, nozzle it's telling us to adjust the max volumetric speed which will um, improve the print time on some stuff but i'm not sure that's the only thing that it's um, there for right so say goodbye to under extrusion rough surfaces and loss of detail Unlike standard high flow nozzles, bamboo's high yet consistent extrusion ensures crisp edges, flawless texturing, and ultra smooth surfaces every single time. Upgrade now and print faster without compromise. So I thought what we would do here is it does, um, you know, show 40 and 65 uh, millimeters cubed per second for max volumetric speed here. I think we'll try the 40 on here and look at what it does to the, um, you know, print time and everything. And maybe try the, you know, 65 uh, millimeter cube per second. I've never tried 40 millimeter cube per second on the standard nozzle. A uh, comment down below if you've ever run it that high, but I've, I don't think I've ever run it that high. And if you have a really large print running at that high is generally... I'm not that great. So let's just try it on 40 and um, see if there's any noticeable difference in time or in the print. And then maybe to end the video, we'll do one at 65. So here we are back in Bamboo Studio. It's crying about the overhangs. Let's resync the printer information because I do have the high flow nozzles um, installed in there. We'll go ahead and sync the filaments again. And what we'll notice is just by changing this high flow nozzle doesn't change anything about the max volumetric speed. So we'll see here it's showing the 24 just like it was in there. So let's go ahead and bump it up to 40, which it um, showed in the first place. And we will call this, um, let's save it as a high flow. So we'll just put HF in there and hit OK. So now we have that set up with um, the high flow nozzles and that should change all of the other filament. Yeah, all of the other filament max volumetric speed um, changed to 40 as well. So let's rerun this black one. Let's slice the plate and we'll see that it saved two minutes there and uh, the same type of prep time. I think it's two seconds less on the prep time there. Uh, but 
total model printing time one hour nine minutes so one hour and 21 minutes so the last one did it in an hour and 14 minutes um, just over that um, so we'll see if this one is around the same time or um, if it's actually a little bit faster um, the one variable here is, um, you know, whenever we hit print plate here, this auto bed leveling and offset calibration, since I just switched the nozzles, it may do that on this one. Um, so we'll see what it does. All right, so that time it came in just under a minute and 13 or an hour and 13 minutes. So saved about a minute or so by uh, moving the volumetric speed up a little bit. Um, so let's go ahead and take it to the max up to 65 and uh, see what that does for the print time. So here it saved two minutes. It saved almost two minutes in, in the print as well. Even with changing the nozzle, I thought it might um, need to do some additional calibrations, and maybe it did, but it, it was still fairly quick. So let's go ahead and go back in here and edit, and we'll change this to 65 and save that. And then now let's uh, slice the plate. That didn't actually change anything. So moving it up to 65 didn't actually change anything. That seems interesting. It seems like it should have me reslice it. Maybe I'll move it just a little bit so it needs to reslice, but it's still saying a minute and 21. So there is a cutoff. Um, with the max volumetric speed, it's only going to go um, up so high. So it looks like 40 is about the, the highest it's going to go. So I don't think we need to run it again. So that's super interesting results. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at the differences between um, the normal nozzle and the high flow nozzle at the 40 uh millimeters cubed per second as the max volumetric speed all right so in all of the following pictures the one on the right here is with the standard hardened steel nozzle 0.4 and this is with the high flow nozzle not a ton of huge differences in there other than this one does look like it's just a tiny bit smoother See, there's a little defect here and there on that one. One little defect there. Ooh, lots of layer lines in the high flow there. Let's see if we see those same ones. Yeah, you see the same kind of layer lines. This is a really good camera I have. We're zooming way in on it. But don't see any major defects on anything. You know, just a couple of little errors. Every print has a couple errors in it, but everything seems to be pretty good there. Let's take a look at the other one. Not as many errors right there. Just one little hiccup there. But it does look like this lays it down just a little bit better. You know, there's still a couple of little errors, but we're really zooming in on this thing yeah so super interesting it does speed the print up a little bit and it is claiming that it helps to extrude a little bit better which i guess we could make the case for that or make the case that it looks uh, fairly similar is it like life-changingly different i don't know so is it worth $55 for each nozzle, $110? I, 
I'm not sure. We'll run some more tests with it, or if there's some other things that you'd like me to print with the high flow nozzle, I'm going to try using it for a little while, running it at 40, since that seems to be the cap um, is uh, at 40 for the max volumetric speed. So I'll run that for a little while and see um, how that goes. Um, but it does look like it flows pretty well and it speeds up the print just a little bit. Um, so super interesting video today, a couple of um, interesting things that we learned. So um, in the slicer, the X1C seems to be a little bit faster on single color prints. Um, but as we see on the stopwatch, not always going to be the case um, since the H2D has the auto calibration function. So it's not always going to need need to go through all of those calibrations. Plus, for its flow calibration, it doesn't print out that big giant thing like the X1C does. It prints out a little tiny thing, much like my A1 Mini. Um, so that was super interesting to see on the stopwatch that the H2D still beat out the X1C, even though um, on the slicer it said otherwise. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and learned something today. If you did, be sure to smash that like button and uh, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the next video. I appreciate everybody watching and have a great rest of your weekend.